If we're standing on the ground and shooting laser beams out of our eyes up at the ceiling, and we're just, like, moving our head around and looking all over the place, and then the laser rays from our eyes are burning a hole in the ceiling, so it's kind of drawing a picture on the ceiling, and the only thing we have to do to draw this picture is, is look around and just kind of move our head however we feel like. Well, what we could also do there is that that same path that we just drew on the ceiling by looking at it, if we had, say, tilted the ceiling and, like, put the ceiling, like, kind of sideways and then took our head and put it exactly back where we started and then started shooting laser beams again and moved our head exactly the same way again, then we would have drawn a different curve on the sideways ceiling. If we had maybe took a donut and hung it from the ceiling, like a chandelier, then we start shooting laser beams again, but we do the exact same starting place, and then we do the exact same motion when we're kind of just looking around. Then it's going to draw a different picture. It's like a different curve because now it's cutting through the donut instead of the flat ceiling. And then... For everything that we could hang from the ceiling, if we just move our head in the same way, so for any surface that's defined by a polynomial equation, it's going to be a different path that we drew with our laser beam eyes. But there's something common in all those paths, which is that we moved our head exactly the same way. And so what we're really doing here is that we're trying to start getting a handle on how we're going to classify all these different types of curves together. Because one problem that we have right now is that before when the steer was going through the ground, it was a sphere. But now we have the ceiling moving up and down and it's a cone. And so we want to find a way so that the sphere going through the ground and the cone going through the ceiling are really the same thing. So what we would like to do is find out what they have in common. What are the common elements of them, right? So if we have to, just for example, for integers, integers, we can factor them in terms of prime numbers. And then if we wanted to find out what do the numbers have, quote unquote, in common, it's just the greatest common divisor, right? And the way that works is you just write everything out with its prime numbers, and then you throw everything away that they don't have in common, and whatever they have in common, that's like the greatest common divisor. If you're sitting there and someone walks up to you and hands you these two integers and says, can you find the greatest common divisor, and you don't feel like factoring those integers into prime numbers, then what you could also do is there's this procedure that you can follow that has these instructions and they're numbered and then you just all you have to do is just follow the directions in the instructions for this procedure and then what you're going to do is this series of high school long division problems and then when you finish with the procedure you're going to find a number and that number is going to be the greatest common divisor and then each step of that procedure contains information about the greatest common divisor. We really need to change our perspective about polynomials. Instead of thinking about an n degree polynomial as a really complicated formula, we're going to realize that we can just throw away everything about these polynomials that's the same, and then every nth degree polynomial, can we can just only deal with the coefficients. Every time we write a number in base 10, we're really representing that number as a polynomial. An example of that is that the number 121 is just the polynomial x squared plus 2x plus 1 when x is equal to 10. But the difference between writing numbers in base 10 and then polynomials is that when we're dealing with polynomials, the coefficients can be real numbers or they can be complex numbers. 
But when we're writing numbers in base 10, then we're only allowed to use a finite number of digits, 0 through 9. It's a really bad habit to be in to think that numbers are their base 10 decimal representation. A much better way to think about it is, as we were saying before, that each real number is actually just a way of mapping the entire real line into itself. And then the natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, and so on, are just the dimension of the vector space. Numbers are really much better when you just completely forget about base 10. And then a number is just what it is. And we can represent a number in base 2 or base 3 or write it as an infinite series or a continued fraction and so on. And then the complex numbers, there's nothing mysterious about them anymore. They're just numbers. They're just mappings just the same way that the real numbers are. And so now that we've really like gotten our head on straight and we don't just feel like we're married to base 10 anymore, we have this new perspective which has given us this enormous freedom because we don't only have to use a finite number of digits in our coefficients. Now our coefficients can be any real number, any complex number, and there's a continuously infinite number of those types of things. And that means that we just gained a huge foothold and now we are able to look out over the entire subject of all of mathematics and we're able to see how polynomials play such an important role in holding together and interconnecting all of these really hard to understand abstract concepts which have so many complicated interrelationships with each other. We're never going to be able to use our limited human imagination to perceive those connections between those abstract concepts unless we're able to just see numbers as what they really are.